The economy, innovation, and consumers would be hurt if the government adopts President Obama's net neutrality plan. That's according to a former member of the Federal Communications Commission. Net neutrality is the principle that the Internet's pipe should be equally open for everyone. Earlier this month, President Obama called on the FCC to reclassify Internet service providers, or ISPs, as Title II carriers, an aggressive endorsement for a plan that would essentially make broadband a utility. I'm urging the Federal Communications Commission to do everything they can to protect net neutrality for everyone. To put these protections in place, I'm asking the FCC to reclassify Internet service under Title II of a law known as the Telecommunications Act. First of all, it's pretty much unprecedented for a president of the United States to uh, speak so directly to what's supposed to be an independent agency. Robert McDowell is a former FCC commissioner. While much of the net neutrality debate is over what regulations are needed to protect a free and open internet, McDowell says there's no need for government action. So what's broken that needs fixing? Uh, I think nothing. Uh, I've called for, uh, for years for a bona fide peer-reviewed market study that if indeed there's an illness, let's diagnose it first before we start prescribing cures. He says antitrust laws are already on the books to handle the concerns of pro-Title II advocates, begging the question, why now? I think this big push is we're seeing uh, in the last two years of the Obama administration a big push on a number of fronts, not just the communications fronts, to get through uh, the last uh, pieces of their agenda. And so you're seeing the FCC being used uh, for just that. Consumers are fine. Consumers think the internet works well. There's a Rasmussen poll that came out just a few days ago that shows that uh, most consumers think um, having more government intervention in this space is not a good idea and could politicize uh, business decisions and engineering decisions and actually end up slowing down uh, the progress of the internet and how it develops and evolves. As an example of just that, McDowell points to the fallout of President Obama's remarks. If you look right after uh, President Obama's recent announcement regarding Title II, AT&T said it's calling off its uh, fiber deployment until it knows what's going to happen, what the rules are going to be. And I think you're going to see more and more companies doing just that. So that's sort of proof positive that new rules chill investment discourage investment, and if you deregulate in an intelligent way and rely on antitrust and consumer protection laws instead, you can have a wonderful explosion of entrepreneurial brilliance. What you're saying is that, you know, this increased regulation is going to hinder things like innovation and it won't enhance the consumer experience. Exactly. So Title II, people need to think of maybe their grandmother's black rotary dial phone from like the 1950s. That That is the innovation you get from Title II. So uh, when you have to have mother may I permission seeking from the government to innovate, you don't get much innovation. Uh, the economy, engineers could have come up with something better than that black rotary dial phone, but that was the state of the art for a long time because of government policies. Um, and that's what's going to happen, I think, with the internet if we go down the Title II route. If stifling innovation doesn't hit home, perhaps the impact on your wallet will. Well, ultimately, consumers, I think, will pay a higher cost. So this is being sold in the name of consumers for consumer protection. And what you end up uh, with any sort of government economic regulation are, are higher costs for that proverbial grandmother who sort of sips bandwidth, doesn't use the Internet as much, um, versus the bandwidth uh, hog or the, the high-end user who might be gaming and, and doing other things on the Internet. So if you, especially if you're going to have one-size-fits-all pricing, which is what a lot of Internet proponents call for, you're going to see prices go up for the low-end user in order to capture the costs caused by the high-end users. So ultimately that means higher prices for the people that the law is ostensibly being designed to protect. In other words, Obamacare for the Internet, at least according to Texas Senator Ted Cruz. It's not clear whether the FCC will bow to President Obama's wishes. The agency is, after all, supposed to be independent. But McDowell says President Obama's unprecedented push is a reason to call into question the agency's independence. The FCC was expected to vote on net neutrality rules by the end of the year. However, the vote has now been postponed. In a statement, Chairman Wheeler suggested the agency needs more time to make a decision. Amanda House, One American News, Washington.